The last one? Use factory. Use factory. Use factory. And use factory is the by the name you can know, right? Factory pattern. You know factory pattern? What is that factory pattern is? You don't want the production part, you just need the item, you just take which it. Which we enjoy. want to mm -hmm. pro, uh, produce. The the thing only which we want will take it from the It's like abstraction. Yeah. Hide the implementation part but show the value or the output value. Output value yeah. production. So the creation of the instance of that particular particular class yeah, you abstract yeah, it out yeah. right mm -hmm. like i gave you the uh, parlay example yeah, i was yeah. giving right so same way the, so factory is a is a class who has a creation knowledge for a particular uh, family class family of a class right it's always family family means inheritance pattern so let's say if you have a logger and then you have multiple uh, different kind of logger let's say logger is in and then sql logger file logger and all of that right so that, this is the factory for a logger. So always we create a factory for a particular family. Family means the base class you know and then there are many child classes. Mm -hmm. Those are, that's the common thing basically. You could do factory for anything. But normally we do for the particular base class. For, for, for a particular base class or for a particular interface. You will say for logger, I logger. And then I log SQL, I log in, mem in memory and so on. So remember I asked you that question, like we can change the provider and say that either use use class to HTTP logger or socket logger let's say, right? So you can always say use class as a HTTP logger, use class as HTTP logger and then use the provider as logger. If this is one entry in your logger, in your provider, in the provider's array, you have this entry already in your project. And now you are shipping this code to production. And in production, they do not want HTTP logger because IS is choking. They want to change that. They want to do socket logging now, web socket logging, right? So we are intelligent, we know that uh, in this case how to deal it. We know that we do not want to now go each and every component and change their logger to socket logger or something. We already learned how to solve this problem. I will just create another uh, logger called as socket logger and that extends from again logger. Socket logger that extends from logger and there you can have a log function and then get the message and do the socket dot send socket dot send the message, message right correct mm -hmm. and and then you change this code right unless you change this code it will not switch so you have to cut this line of code and then put the socket logger okay. if you tell to your manager that this is what i have to do every time i deploy into production certainly they are not happy they will say for every time you deploy into uh, production, if there are five apps, for all five apps you have to go and change this, then you are making me silly or you are silly. Something like that, right? So, so then only the requirement comes and then Angular team has the solution for that. They said use factory. So use factory comes here. Okay. So use factory is normally uh, used as this kind of situation and sometimes what happens use factory needs some of the configs also because here how to solve it let's say this problem how do you know whether it is a dab mode or it's a production mode or it's in QA let's say our requirement is for prod use socket and for let's say dev QA use HTTP logger right so who has this entry? Where do you put this kind of knowledge? What is my mode? Factory. In factory will have a function who will return the data, right? Yeah. So yes, let's finish that first. So basically we will use use factory rather than use class here, right? We are saying, let's finish that first. So you can say use factory rather than use class. And the factory name is some function. Let's say call it 
get logger. That's it. And we can define this get logger function here. Get logger as a function. But I was asking, how do you know this mode? Whether it is dev or QA. But let's say if you know this mode, mode is coming to you. I'm just giving you the solution, how do you solve it? I get the mode and then I'll put a switch case here. Right? Switch on mode. And the first case is, if it is dev, then return HTTP logger, new HTTP logger. Other cases, if it is prod, then return socket new socket logger. So this is a factory where I am saying that I am getting the mode and if mode is dev, I am returning new HTTP logger. If mode is production, I am returning socket logger. Now this is the automation that you did and you just referred here rather than use class. I will change this code now. And say use factory. So whoever knows entire dependency injection, like all of the types of dependency injections providers, mm. And if those guys start coding it, they will not do this kind of coding. If you have this requirement already that tomorrow it will change, yet they may ask for the um, in-memory logger and socket logger and they can switch. They start like this. They will not start with silly saying use class. Right? So if you go to the real project, you should also start like this. Ask this question to your business. Ask this kind of question whether, uh, whether you want them to be configurable. Is it required that in two application it will go as a configuration? They will say yes, then use value. Provide it as an injection. Do it as a dependency injection, the configuration thing. Right? Ask this question, do you have a, any need that you that you can switch the logger? Right? So you start with this, use factory. And then you, you have all of the flavors in your project. <coughs> then you'll say use factory and use this class, uh, function, get logger. This is the answer. But again, there is a question here. So I don't want to confuse you. First, let me clarify what is factory. So factory pattern is, uh, factory provider is basically it's a function and it, it follows the factory design pattern. Factory design pattern is what? It just encapsulates the creation part of particular object. So here this gate logger is encapsulating that. It is saying, don't worry, you just need a logger, I'll give you. Right? And family is logger. So basically, they both will have same methods. When we say family, family is base class. Base class is logger, and then this is HTTP, this is socket, but their functions are same. It is polymorphism again. <coughs> right? Polymorphism, it's same base class. So then you use factory. Do not confuse your client. So that client will have always same methods, but they are going to the different, different places. For example, ATM center. It's a good example of polymorphism, right? <laughs> Maybe it's good or not, but basically wherever you go, all of the ATM centers, they do, they, they do the, but a different, different, uh, they just go to the same ATM place, but they have a different, different places to do that, right? Here it will do differently, here it will do differently, but they basically have the same thing. Like you insert the, um, same process, like you insert the ATM card, you get the money. So method is same, but they are doing differently. Uh, let's say Citibank is doing differently, some bank is doing differently, but their operation is same. So it's a polymorphism. So here it is same. Like they both are logger. Then only you do this factory. It's not key, this factory is returning logger also and then uh, person service also. Right? So if mode is uh, production return person service or logger, it's not like that. It has to be one family. So question is, let's say now you end up doing this, right? You end up uh, uh, creating new HTTP logger and then let's say if this service needs dollar HTTP inside that, you have to pass it. You owning, now you started owning the responsibility for creating this class, so you need all of the dependency to pass. And that is something that is always there. So therefore don't use this factory everywhere. Use it at minimum places and mostly we put it in the main part of our project, where you start the project, bootstrap the project. Not everywhere. Because here you are taking more responsibility. Now you are saying I need dollar HTTP here. 
and what else here you need in socket maybe base url of that socket and for http logger base url for the http and then dollar http all of this you need right who will give you dollar http here to make a post because in constructor you need them right are you following me let me erase this i'll show you the http logger class so that you will understand this problem you know i just don't want to give you the use factory definition but let's use it how you use it and then how you solve it right so for example you had this http logger and in this constructor you need dollar http right and that is the client the uh, http client that class is that you need that to do your stuff and also you were using let's say configurations so you are also doing inject um config called as config type of config it's <laughs> it's a lots of verbos you were using both dollar http also and that also and then on post function on message function is on log function on the function called as log we were doing two thing we say uh, this dot dollar http dot post and then you need base url so i'll say this dot config Uh, this dot config base URL dot base URL this dot config dot base URL and then you know, slash uh, let's say log if this is my URL and the second parameter is the message if this was the class which is very complicated already it is asking two things configuration and all the stuff and all of that right. so now you wrote the factory it's not simple so now if imagine the same way imagine the socket one i don't have the big board i would have written board so basically we have a socket class also which is taking let's say base url from config for the socket and let's say if other things are coming right and then and then if i end up writing my git logger factory class so let's do that we know get logger this is my factory right here i have to decide first of all whether it is dev if it is dev then do something if it is qa then do something and that code i wrote already so dev then do something qa then do something right basically you want to return so in this case what happens generally your factory needs some of the data so whenever you create factory class factory class in in regular design pattern also and if you are creating 10 different kinds of um, instances of the same family then basically you own you own their dependency to be injected that is your responsibility also so it's not that responsibility to just create them because in order to create them you need all of the ingredients to pass if that factory palaji factory is saying i am the factory of the palaji biscuit so whichever whichever biscuit you need either palaji or palaji x or palaji m or palaji y i own the responsibility also to to pass all of the ingredients that the biscuit need to in order to create that biscuit so now we are saying is this gate logger owns the responsibility to pass each and every instance of the each and every dependency of their corresponding um, services for example here in the dev time i want to <coughs> create a stp logger so i'll say return new http logger and then i want to pass all of the dependency so there are many options one option is i would say here uh, let's i'll do here and in that case i have to get the dependency here as a dollar http and then uh, also i need the config right so all of this dependency we we inject from the provider then so when uh, in our provider so now we know that we need this dependency config here so that i can pass the config here to each and every class so i'll use provider and then in here i'll say provider um 
as a logger, provider as a logger, and then use factory, use factory, uh, what is here we put? Use factory, gate logger. So we use gate logger here, use factory, this is the function, right? Gate logger. So I use gate logger. But this function needs some of the data. So where do I put that? Do you know? Have you ever done this kind of thing? Where you have just a function. So you see, this is the this is again I think this is a powerful thing because now you can just call any function and, and inject the dependency. Mm -hmm. And there is a call as depths. D E P S. And then basically this is the dependency that you can pass. And you know that this factory needs some of the data. For example, this factory needs config. So here I will say config. And this config is a DI token name for the, uh, that we set up earlier in the earlier class, uh, earlier session, we saw that, right? So I will say config is something that it needs. And if let's say if at this time already your HTTP, sorry, already HTTP logger is registered, let's say. It depends on the sequence. Let's say before this, I have already registered my uh, HTTP logger like this. And also I have registered the other logger. What is that? Uh, socket logger. Then even I can pass those here as a dependency because those are already registered. But we do not want this situation. We do not want to register HTTP logger and uh, socket logger independently. So that they can, uh, <coughs> so in your component you can always ask HTTP logger and then log it. You don't want that situation. So this is not the case. Otherwise, I would say config comma HTTP logger and then socket logger, and you get both all of this config comma HTTP logger and socket logger. Then here it is very simple. You'll say if it is dev, return HTTP logger. If it is uh, production return, socket logger. You don't do an all new thing, everything. All new up and all the, that you will not do. But this is not the case. HTTP logger and socket logger is not registered initially. I just know config is registered. So you have to register first config here. Remember this is sequence, sequential. So you have to first register config the way we defined already. Then you register provider as logger, factory as gate logger, and then dependency as configuration, comma, dollar HTTP, or whatever you need, you just pass them. So we found that here we need dollar HTTP or HTTP client. So I'll say comma HTTP client, and it goes as a dependency here as a HTTP client, dollar HTTP, whatever name you can give, and then config. You get both of them injected here, and then you do the rest of the work. So use factory is not simple, <coughs> and uh, it needs some uh, decoration, some work. But therefore, you don't do everywhere use factory. You just do at one place and very critical place where you want to inject this kind of thing. So, <clears throat> so any uh, question on this? And then now if you want to push this code to, to dev environment, so, and tomorrow you want to push it into QA environment, let's say, or production environment. So now you have both use case here, if dev, and if, if let's say prod, if prod then return new socket by passing the same config. So this code is written once, it is deployed to dev, next you want to deploy it to QA or production, there is no single code of change. So you saw that right, we started from use class and you had some uh, design risk, mm -hmm. we solved it with use existing, there were one more design risk how to solve uh, this kind of situation where you want to go to multiple environments. We solve now that also. Mm -hmm. And if you think of some other problem, then Angular will think to create some six number provider or seven number provider. <laughs> <laughs> if you think some other problem, just share with Google. <laughs> they will give you some solution for that. So I don't think there is another uh, 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 thing uh, for, the, uh, for the provider thing, right? So these are the uh, separate kinds of provider, right? Use factory. And I love this use factory because this is very powerful. You can uh, uh, do many stuff. And if you learn many other examples, live examples, you'll see how they are using it very intelligently. 
right? But this is good. We also did one good example. We said like this is a requirement. You want to go with HTTP logger or socket logger or in-memory logger. Now you can put all of this if else case here and just deploy. And this configuration, another question can come: How who will change this configuration file? If you hard code this configuration here, then again it is a code change. Last time we said right. In the configuration registration time, we said we will use uh, use value and we'll put the all value here in this main file, main module. So that you you do not want to do actually. So this is something that should be con coming from the release. When you release the thing, you can inject some of the stuff to the source code. So it should come from release. So you should not even hard code here. It should come from the release. So when you are releasing your product to QA or dev, you are passing some of the release parameters here as a dependency. So they are coming here and then it is automatically passed as a configuration towards all of your project. So I think this is good. Next we will do the multiple things. <coughs> what is multi-true? 